CBS this morning has partnered with professional networking site LinkedIn for our continuing series, Work in Progress. We're exploring the future of jobs and issues facing the American workforce. We are looking this morning at the growing number of job openings in the U.S. The latest labor statistics show the number of job openings rose to more than 6 million in April. That's an all-time high, by the way. That's up more than 7% from the same time a year ago. LinkedIn CEO Jeff Weiner is with us at the table to discuss the numbers. Hello, Jeff Weiner. Before we do that, I know you heard the overnight news about Travis Kalanick uh, officially resigning. How big a deal is it, and what message does it send? Because last week we heard he was going to take a temporary leave of absence, and now he stepped down. This is huge. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal uh, for a number of reasons, not the least of which uh, the share of mine that Uber occupies in terms of consumers and transportation infrastructure. Uh, you know, this is Travis's company. He created it. Uh, he's the controlling shareholder. My understanding is he's still going to remain on the board. And it'll be very interesting to see how they handle the transition from this point going forward. But it forward. looks like or appears that it happened, the resignation, because of pressure from the investors that he brought in. Yeah, that's my understanding as well. And uh, I think it speaks to some of the challenges that the company's been experiencing, the fact that the investors felt like that was the necessary step in order to ensure the success of the company going forward. Well, there's an opening. If there ever was a time for compassionate leadership, which you are known for, Jeff Weiner. I'm very happy in my <laughs> current role, and uh, I wish uh, the new CEO, whoever that is, the best of what luck. What do you think the new CEO needs to do? A, a few different things, uh, given the, the situation that they're going to be walking into. One, recognizing that with Travis still remaining on the board, the founder of a company casts a very long shadow, regardless of who that person is. So establishing the right relationship uh, with Travis is going to be essential. Uh, I think second is uh, you could argue that changing culture is the single most difficult thing you can do to a company or an operation. And so remaining patient, uh, managing expectations and understanding how big that challenge is. And third is an old friend once told me uh, trust equals consistency over time. And it's a simple formula for a complex human dynamic. And I think it's really important that whoever steps into that situation is going to be very consistent with what it is that they're trying to accomplish and be patient. Uh, I interviewed Jack Ma last night, and that's one thing he said, trust, trust, trust mm. has to exist. Let me turn to the jobs yeah. and mm -hmm. the question that many people would like to ask you, where are they? So uh, in terms of uh, some of the cities with the, the fastest growing influx of talent, which I think in, to some extent is a, a reflection or a proxy for where those job opportunities are, we're seeing a lot of growth and a lot of movement uh, to cities like Seattle, Portland, Denver, Austin, Charlotte. All tech centers. Uh, increasingly tech centers, uh, very high quality of living. And by comparison with an area like uh, Silicon Valley, uh, lower cost of living, although that is changing as you see more and more people going to these cities. But six million openings, Jeff, all time high. Why is that now? Yeah, it's uh, it's really uh, interesting to see six million available jobs. Gail, exactly to your point, that's the highest number they've seen on record since tracking the data uh, like this specifically. You know, there's a lot of debate back and forth among economists. Is there a skill gap? Is there not a skill gap? I think when you think about it in the aggregate across the United States, you can debate it, but uh, unquestionably at the local level, there are skills gaps. There are cities uh, that are hiring, they're hiring quickly, they've got fast growing industries, and they don't have the talent uh, with the requisite skills to take on those roles. And so what LinkedIn would like to do is leverage all this extraordinary data we've been able to collect by virtue of having 500 million people join the site. Uh, we have over 10 million jobs that are now listed on the site, 50,000 standardized skills. Mm -hmm. We've got the information to match talent to jobs in a way that was never possible before. So we're really going to stay So you try to put it together, the jobs with the person? That's the, the ultimate goal, Charlie, is to make sure that each individual member has information about where those jobs are, the skills required to obtain the jobs, and ideally even be able to acquire those skills either on or off of LinkedIn to obtain the job. For employers, it's an understanding of what skills they're going to need to be able to continue to grow and where that talent exists. And uh, we'd also like to be able to provide this information to governments and uh, educational infrastructure, junior colleges, vocational training facilities to create ideally just-in-time curriculum. But you recently said a company meeting skills, not degrees. Uh, is what you're looking for as someone who's, whose son just recently graduated from a business school. I went, ah, oh, mm. what does that mean? Do you think degrees are not as important? So I think coming back to the, the skills, not degrees. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what first, you talking about, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> first, first <laughs> uh, I wouldn't characterize it as skills, not degrees. I think sometimes people hear us talking about the importance of skills and not to overlook skills. 
uh, and that skills and degrees are not mutually exclusive. I think sometimes they like to take headlines and uh, make that a bit provocative. Uh, exactly to your point, there are people pursuing degrees, graduating with degrees that are incredibly valuable. Some of these people are first uh, generation in their families to be able to graduate college and they're going to go on to jobs that their parents couldn't have dreamed of. That said, uh, certainly speaking for Silicon Valley, uh, we do too much hiring based on traditional backgrounds and traditional educations and we are overlooking incredible talent that may not have the prestigious degree but has the resilience, the grit, the perseverance, the growth mindset they do, they do. Yeah. do well. But yeah. To that point, can the next, there's been a lot of talk about this, whether, whether the current generation can be more successful than their parents, mm -hmm. which has always been the assumption in American life, right, yeah. that, the kid, that, the, that the children do better. What, what challenges do you see on that front for, for the next generations? I, I think one of the biggest challenges is going to be education and acquiring the right skill set to take advantage of the opportunities that are and will be and not just the jobs that once were. And you have but to a lot of these kids have spent enormous amounts of money on degrees and aren't getting jobs. Yes. And, and, and aren't getting jobs that pay well at all. Yeah. So what were you going to no, say? No, you go ahead. Yeah. No. So I, again, I think it comes back to making sure we understand where those job opportunities are, going back to the six million jobs that are available in the country today. Uh, when you have the data to understand where those jobs are, the skills that are required for those jobs, and you can help people better match their own skills to those opportunities, I think we can start to close that gap. But to your point, uh, there is a lot of pain out there. There is a lot of anger out there. And uh, that's one of the reasons we're working together on work in progress, is to shine a light on some of those stories so that people understand uh, where there's fear in this country about being displaced by virtue of technology, uh, where the jobs are, are leaving, where the jobs are moving to. And uh, we're grateful to be working with you guys on that. Let me make one quick point, which everybody agrees with. You know, it is important to be able to find jobs and have the skills that come with finding a job or they'll get you the job. It's also important to have a good liberal education. Uh, going to college is not just about finding a job. Mm. It's about understanding, you know, the civilization, understanding where you come from and understanding and, and getting other kinds of skills that will benefit you as a human being. It absolutely is. Again, I don't think this is mutually exclusive. Right. Steve Jobs used to talk about the importance of a liberal arts education exactly. and connecting dots, and it was those connection of dots that enabled him to create Apple and some of the brilliant innovation that Apple's introduced to the world. The flip side, Charlie, is that, frankly, our universities, our school system is not doing a good enough job equipping people with the skills they need for the jobs that are and will be as opposed to the jobs that once Thanks, were. Thanks, Jeff. Great to have you. Great to be Thank here. You very I was going to say, quickly, Jobs was kicked out of Apple. You think Kalanick, you think Kalanick goes back to Uber at some point? Uh, it'll be really interesting to keep an eye on that and see whether or not it happens. We are all watching. Thank you, Jeff Lena.